Sanjana, you can formally start. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. A very good afternoon and warm welcome to today's webinar on marketing strategy in the post-COVID world to be delivered by our respected Professor Dr. Ravinder Singh. To share with you, I have a very long association with RSA and a very pleasant memories of, uh, of my interaction with him during my IIMC days. I always start my marketing classes with the case uh, evening at a shopping mall or a day in a life of a salesperson from Sir's case book. It is a great opportunity and, a, and it's, a, it's my pleasure that uh, today I, uh, I have given the opportunity to introduce Dr. Ravinder Singh to my students and the colleagues at Calcutta Business School. Before I introduce RS Sir, I convey my gratitude to our respected director, Sir, Dr. Jane Mukhopadhyay, who is an alumnus of IIT IIM, and uh, uh, he is also a very great human being. I thank you, Sir, for bringing RS Sir here and giving me the opportunity to introduce him. Uh, Dr. Ravinder Singh is currently working as an associate professor of marketing at IIM Calcutta. He completed his PhD in marketing from IIM Ahmedabad, MBA from XLRI Jamshedpur, and BTEC from IIT BHU. His research interests include CSR, marketing of bottom of the pyramid, sales management, and sales management. His research has been presented in leading academic conferences across the world and have published in reputed top journals, which includes Journal of Business Ethics, Marketing Theory, Journal of Business Research, International Marketing Review, International Journal of Human Resource Management, and Journal of Information Technology. He has also authored several case studies and books on marketing. He has previously worked in industry in various sales and marketing roles for several years. Thank you, sir. Over to you for this thought-provoking and wonderful session, interesting session okay. ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sanjana. Sir, Ramendra, I'll just a uh, few sure, lines about you. Uh, you know, wherever I have gone, I have taken Professor Aris with me. Like when I was with JD Villa, I would invited him. When I went to Heritage again, but uh, he was he had come. And again at CBS, we have just two months into the system. But one of the first names I thought for doing a webinar is with Professor Aris. You know, uh, it's uh, very nice and I want to, from the heart of my heart, on my personal behalf, and also on behalf of the Kaita Business School, and behalf of all the faculty and students, I would like to express my warm welcome to Dr. Raminder Singh. And also express my gratitude because, you know, he's taken out time, uh, 4.30 to 5.30, is a big time for him, but he's been very kind. Uh, at a very short notice, he agreed to do the webinar. So Dr. Ramendra, from our side, uh, we want to express a gratitude. And thank you so much. Thank, thanks you. for inviting uh, So I have seen him before also. He, his classes are very, very practical. So I will expect all the students to actually note down whatever is saying the important things. Because in all MBA colleges, marketing and sales remains the most important, the most uh, you know popular major. So, and I think uh, if you have to start any business, the first thing is say uh, you are facing a lot of restrictions on the travel, on in shopping, and, and in general the movement. Now it has improved a lot uh, since uh, April. Uh, I mean, since since June it has improved a lot. Uh, domestic travel has opened up. International travel has also is opening up to a large extent. Uh, so things are on uh, the uptake. But the point is there are still the restrictions and and other things which we have not seen in the pre-COVID world. And we are we are actually going into a world which uh, where people are a little worried about uh, the touch factor, right? So we are living in a world where most people are going and buying online, or at least approaching uh, uh, everything into a low-touch uh, kind of environment. And, and businesses are also encouraging the consumers and others to other stakeholders to go for low-touch approach. Uh, we are also hearing for the first time uh, the concept of contact tracing apps like Arogya Setu. Right? Uh, how to figure out how many people around you are infected, um, and 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 then you know save yourself from that. So it is also a method of collecting data and and finding out uh, uh, how to save more people who are in touch with or in contact with or in vicinity of uh, infected people. So this is also very interesting because uh, many times uh, a lot of uh, 
you know internet uh, uh, i mean a lot of uh, activists internet activists uh, or other kind of activists have said that contact tracing apps uh, are only called as contact tracing apps but in fact it is a way of uh, collecting data on, on on the citizens right and if you see the back end of this contact tracing app like arugya setu in a country like india which has more than 1.3 billion people there's a lot of data about people where they live where they are what is the level of uh, health uh, about their health parameters and so on so there is also a question of privacy you know which which uh, we had probably uh, you know uh, we had not shared this data with the government uh, before the covid hit us now the contact tracing apps are trying to catch hold of that data so there's a lot of new things uh, you know as the slide mentions a lot of new things that have come up including the words like symptomatic and asymptomatic so the whole world has now looked at uh, you know people who are symptomatic and they should probably take care of themselves in either in hospitals or through medication and there are a lot of other people who are asymptomatic who are just you know uh, as good as not uh, carrying the virus and uh, so the, the nutshell is that uh, there are a lot of new um uh, variables that have entered into our world which we are still grappling with how how does each of these or any of these and a combination of these affecting our personal lives as well as the professional life and it has already started to affect us so uh, recently there was this advertisement by a very famous uh, organization called kent you know we all know kent is a very famous uh, manufacturer of uh, purified water or ro water as we say so they came out with this ad where if you see the ad you know where hema malini is also the famous actor she she is also a brand ambassador and here in the ad uh, the company is kind of um, slightly disrespecting uh, so as to say the uh, the mates the home housemates that we uh, the, the the housemates who help we make uh, who who help we take in fact uh, in a household work and there you'll see that the firm is the company is trying to uh leverage uh, on on the fact that uh, the maids might be infected so why take a risk and you know we should not call them and we should take precaution so they're trying to uh, you know raise a caution but in the process what is happening is they're trying to uh, kind of disrespect or lower the dignity of the maids which belong to a lower different social uh, social class and this ad when it came out um you know it brought in a lot of flack for the company and 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 lot of other negativities um and uh, negative public relations for the company and and it had to be pulled down so the point that i'm trying to raise here is that you know with with this uh, uh, pandemic which is going on uh, the the organizations um, also need to learn how to be sensitive to not just the you know the social class to which the customers belong to but also to the other social classes like the the one that uh, uh, the maids belong to or any other uh, you know social class who may not be your target so we have to be very sensitive to the communication aspects so it here again you see another company called lotus uh, which makes electronic electronics and electrical appliances here also they are bringing in a maid you know see they they are comparing a maid where they saying crossing the crossing the maid and taking the uh, the household appliances like uh, vacuum cleaners and other things and they are saying that you know in the post covid world we should go for contactless household work so we should shun the maid and go for uh these electronics appliances so the company is called lotus electronics so now the uh, i mean maybe this is an innocent kind of an ad but if you look at the sensitivities involved i mean again and again you saw the last one uh, from uh, the last ad from uh, kentaro and this one from lotus in both these ads we are seeing that uh, in both the, uh, the cases they are bringing in the maids as if they are uh, the ones that uh, will bring the virus to our homes uh i mean scientifically that is uh, not totally wrong but the fact is that anybody can bring virus to anybody else right so it's not that only the maids are bringing or can make uh, can bring the virus to our homes it can be our relatives or friends or even we can bring a uh, virus to ourselves or to our friends or to anybody else so uh, so therefore one has to be more sensitive uh, to the uh, to the customers or while communicating so that that the big point otherwise you know like kentaro ad uh, you face a lot of negative publicity and then you have to go back and apologize uh, so what are the good ways of communicating so this is a, a case of dominoes where they focus they don't bring in any maid or anything else they they're not trying to be negative towards anyone they're just trying to you know only talk about the uh, i mean so it's just a politically correct language so they're talking about zero contact delivery they're figuring it out 
they're, they're kind of structuring and they're kind of describing how does the zero contact delivery happen, uh, how do their uh, people come and uh, talk, I mean, uh, ensure zero contact uh, takeaways and, and everything else. Uh, and if you see that, they talk about uh, how they are covered about their company employees, their checkups, their sanitization of the stores and so on and so forth. So they are not trying to demean anyone or they are not trying to disrespect anyone. They are just trying to make sure that they are uh, talking to the customers uh, in, in a way that they build confidence and trust with them. And this is another example from GoAir where they are saying that how the customers should onboard the flights, what kind of uh, precautions they should take, for example, the government advisories, uh, accessing the terminals, how do they check in, how do they bring their boarding passes, what are the baggage limits, uh, wearing a face mask, uh, etc. etc. So, so these are some of the positive communications, you know, like dominoes and go ahead, unlike the negative ones from Kent and Lotus. So, uh, let's look at the big picture now. Sorry, any questions so far? No, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay, okay fine. So yeah, so I was saying that, so what is the big picture? All these things were just more on the communication side. <coughs> the big picture is that, uh, I mean, we have faced this for the last eight months and we are still grappling with the, uh, how to come out of it. Uh, so there are three things that, uh, you know, experts talk about. One strategy is that uh, uh, for those businesses which are not so much hit uh, by the pandemic, you know, uh, not all businesses are badly hit, some are, doing well, some are doing very bad and some are doing uh, slightly bad. So, so these, uh, this pandemic has hit uh, the, uh, the business in a different way. And then depending on how the local situation uh, improves or deteriorates, uh, you know, for example, we have heard that the second wave of uh, COVID has hit uh, European countries, right? So they're, 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 they're the recovery might get delayed. In China, probably they're saying that the second wave is not that bad and they, they will quickly recover. So the point is that depending on how the local situation is managed and how quickly that situation is brought under control, one of the, these three strategies can be uh, can be adopted. So the, the first strategy is when the situation is mild. Uh, so that is where you can say that we will rebound, right? So we'll quickly go back. So if the situation is not that bad, you can quickly rebound to the normal situation. But now we can say that with eight months behind us, uh, and we have all seen you know, what has happened, Rebound strategy looks to be a little difficult uh, because uh, nothing is going to come back to normal so easily, right? So this is something that experts had shared uh, some time back when COVID was still new. But we are now in the eighth or ninth month and we don't think that situation is going to improve to normal condition anytime soon. But still, this was one situation, you know, that rebound where you can come back to the original situation. But it now it looks that original situation is not going to come back so early. The second strategy is when uh, you you come back to uh, not the same normal situation, but a slightly a new normal kind of thing. So that means that you will spend a lot of time as a you know an outcome of the pandemic, like taking its own time to uh, to, to recover from all the and all that, and businesses come back to its uh, original not really the original shape, but somewhat original shape. But that takes a lot of time, and for that you may need to do uh, You may have to restart many things, which means a lot of businesses might uh, close, uh, many business models might change, uh, many people will get unemployed, uh, a lot of businesses will fail, uh, and, and the existing ones which survive will need to reboot themselves. Right? So that is the second kind of a strategy. The third is the reinvent, where you actually have to redo everything and change everything. You know, it's not about changing here and there slightly, 10% uh, here, 20% here. Reinvention means that you completely change your business model, you completely change uh, the way you are working. And that is something that looks like uh, what many businesses will have to, uh, will have to, uh, uh, we have to wake up to. I mean, because uh, many times uh, in many countries and many, many businesses also are present in many uh, multiple countries like multinational companies. So they may not be able to uh, quickly come back to the situation they were in. Uh, which uh, existed before the COVID. So they may, they may have to reinvent many business models. They have to change the way that they've been doing businesses in many countries. Uh, for example, full-time employees may have to work from home or uh, some full-time employees may have, to, may, have to, may have to leave and you may have to 
uh, outsource certain businesses or you may have to stop certain divisions so a lot of reinvention has to be done depending on uh, which part of the business has got hit so these are broadly the three strategies rebound where you come back quickly reboot where you change and can restart your business and reinvent where you completely change the way that you're doing things and start doing things in a different way and 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 this is something that uh, you know is um, we have witnessed this in the changing consumer habits uh, for example they say that uh, it will change uh, the way that consumers are living in their homes in their lives uh, in six different steps so the first step they say is that and this was you know from first to the sixth step is when the pandemic was new uh, when when it hit us we were really shocked and we did not know what was happening then consumers were so suddenly scared of their lives uh obviously uh, because nobody knew how bad it is so everybody started focusing on their health and immune systems and maintenance and wellness and every, everything else was ignored right the health was suddenly the only thing that was important so those those were the first uh, that was the first stage uh, in the shifting uh, consumer habit which was kind of health minded buying so as to say the second stage was where people were little reactive in the sense that they 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 realized there were a lot of advisories coming in wear your mask do social distancing sanitize your, your yourself or sanitize the materials so those were the, those were the reactive health management system so first was proactive where you were taking care of your immune system exercising or 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 kind of uh, building up your immunity and so on that was proactive and then was a reactive which was coming as a reaction to the public advisories to save ourselves and so on third was a pantry preparation which is about stocking up your food products or stocking up your shelves um uh, stocking up your homes uh, so that uh, you don't really know when things will go out of stock luckily in india we haven't seen a panic situation where uh, unlike in us where consumers have fled to the stores they found that uh, shelves became empty in couple of hours so stores opened and consumers just flooded the stores and the whole shelves were empty after couple of hours <laughs> so that kind of situation i haven't heard of uh, happening in india so we have largely uh, saved ourselves from that kind of panic situation the fourth situation is the quarantine living condition where god forbid if any of us is uh, infected you know we will be quarantined right and i've seen families which are all of the entire family is infected and everybody is living quarantine and everybody is quarantined uh, separately so uh, uh, in some cases uh, individual in the family is quarantined and others are uh, negative and, and one or two people are positive so he or she is quarantined and in certain conditions and those quarantine condition how do you live you know so uh, question is that are we prepared ourselves uh, have we prepared ourselves to live a quarantine life uh, i mean not the entire life but a short period of time maybe 14 days 20 days how can we live you know in a quarantine way so uh, and even if it is not just quarantine as in health quarantine or strict quarantine even a mild form of quarantine where we just can't just go out and do anything we like because uh, as you know the risk is high so a little bit of a lot of curtailment of travel and going out and socializing and all that is kind of a mild quarantine so are we are we prepared for that so that it means that we have to do lot of things online whether we are working online or we shopping online or we are we are doing socialization online i've seen families who are celebrating birthdays on the zoom uh, obviously everybody is buying online most of us are buying online we have curtailed our store visits we have stocking our homes with food products and other things so those are the kind of things we have never done before so that is more like a quarantine living condition and then you have uh, the next step is the uh, the restricted living where we are coming out of quarantine but we are still not into normal and the last is where we finally arrive at something which is like a normal but it is not going to be the same thing it is not going to be the same thing as we were living uh, before the covid hit us so it, it will be changed uh, depending on you know we really don't know how the new normal will look like but it probably will not be the same normal that we were used to so that's called the living the new normal so those were the six conditions now if you look at the covid and the pre covid and post covid kind of a situation in the market uh, you will realize i mean this is the data that uh, just pulled out from uh, from the us uh, you know suddenly some of these uh, products became uh, i mean the demand increased and some of the products demand decreased which was like interesting case so if you see Uh, some products are mentioned on the uh, the first uh, column like medical supplies now if you look at the data from pre covid in the first column uh, the week which was the last week of december 2019 and you look at medical supplies rubbing alcohol with 
bath and shower wipes and so on the growth was uh, you know mild it was below uh, it was single digit growth but this was before the covid hit and then you compared with the data on the same category of products in the february first week or the week which ended on the february first and you will see that the growth suddenly almost kind of doubled so that means in the post covid world when people started realizing oh my god there is a pandemic which has hit us these products like medical supplies alcohol bath and shower wipes or first aid kits and hydrogen packs all these are more like sanitizing and cleaning and and health related uh, you know consumables cough remedies antibiotics all their uh, demands have increased this is in the february and then you compare one month later when uh, the local transmission uh, was actually has increased and and people more people got aware of the fact that pandemic has really hit and this is the end of february and this is when we all knew so everybody knew that pandemic is here and then you see the jump just the see the jump between the second column and the third column and you see that everybody was actually stockpiling and this increase in demand is actually the result of stockpiling this product so this is this is how some of these products actually gain and then you look at these products like milk products again if you see uh, the milk product was rising at 11% but then uh, in the initial uh, days of covid in the february first week the, the growth went down but then by february end when everybody knew yeah the pandemic is here we have to stockpile we have to stockpile so all of these food product can be and this is the us typical us <coughs> food uh, uh, products that they eat like canned meat or dried uh, beans or chickpeas and beans and rice and tuna and so on so all of these grows by more than double digits right so 20% 30% 40% so this is a kind of uh, behavior so i'm just trying to show this data to drive home the fact how consumers behave you know they they start hoarding this product even though uh, you know stores were open so uh, stores were open but people were panicking they were just going rushing and buying months and months of supplies at the same time and that is how the demand is increasing but coming back to india we let's look at how the the, the broad picture how is it changing um, i mean this is the consumer behavior side that we just saw but how is the business is changing right so if you look at the swiggy uh, which you all know is a food delivery app uh, but if you look at really swiggy's busy actually race uh, the country's uh, restaurant uh, or food and beverage industry is actually 50 billion dollar and <coughs> post covid it got badly hit because most people uh, you know started uh, eating at home or they started uh, staying more time at home they did not go out to eat so the restaurant uh, demand has gone down by as much as 75% and the order volumes which was swiggy's order volumes uh, even people are not ordering were not ordering from swiggy they were not going to restaurant but not ordering from swiggy also so the order volume also went down by 75% So, so so swiggy's total business model which depended entirely on the ordering from restaurant and delivering to your home was totally disrupted very very disrupted so you cannot really you know either they'll go out of business or they change the business model so the question is how do you deal with such kind of uh, disruptions in the market uh, when you can't control it i mean you can't control the pandemic you can't change the consumer behavior of consumers immediately Uh, they are in a state of panic they will not go to eat uh, they, they they are they are risk averse they want to save themselves so they have started eating home uh, eating at home and to the extent that they are not even ordering uh, from swiggy so how how would swiggy deal with this problem so how they did deal with that was they changed the business model so they changed the business model from food delivery to delivery of everything and anything so first they said we are going into delivery of grocery now by the way the, gro- the grocery delivery business itself is a loss making business for every company either whether it's amazon big basket food panda or any you just name it any anybody who is delivering grocery is 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 actually in a loss making business but then you know what do you do you you have hardly any choice so swiggy decided to enter into that business <coughs> because they thought that grocery is something that people will still order because you have to eat at home so you will you will order for food products and other grocery items so they started delivering that but the challenge was that your delivery people were not trained for that so suddenly you tell your delivery people you know you don't have to go to restaurant for picking up now we are delivering grocery so now the customers will order grocery and you have to go and get the grocery from the grocery shops and deliver to the homes uh, so therefore you have to retrain your delivery force and and swiggy had some 2 to 1/2 lakh of such people uh, they were all gig workers but you have to retrain them you bring them uh, you know 
bring them together retrain them and uh, you have to deliver you have to not just retrain them but also you have to change the mindset and change the compensation structure also because now you have to, you have to see that the way uh, the consumers were delivering uh, or ordering food and how they will now order the groceries will be different so the the, uh, the number of trips that the same person has to make or the distance he has to travel etc or the bill value all of that is going to change we have to calibrate <coughs> the compensation structure in such a way that the same person who was earning say 15000 uh, in the original business model doesn't earn anything much different in the new compensation system because otherwise he will get demotivated because if he suddenly he starts earning half of it you know he will get very demotivated and he will leave so you have to recalibrate the system you have to retrain him you have to change his mindset that you know, the number of trips will change the, the the process will change how he has to deliver how he has to now establish relationship with the grocery uh, grana walas and so on so all of that will change and then we started the genie business also so genie business uh, is is something where the twiggy delivery person goes and uh, delivers your packet of courier i mean it's like he's a courier guy right he picks up the packet from your home and delivers to your friend or to the office or so on right so if you look at the metamorphosis or the changes in the business model it happened very very fast so as i said twiggy lost 75% business because people started stopped ordering food so you you stop being a food delivery app and and suddenly you became you transformed yourself you metamorphosed yourself into a hyper local delivery app so you look at this uh, a snapshot on 13th of april 2020 which when the when the pandemic was almost at the peak they had started some the genie business which i said is almost like courier they started uh, they had started the grocery business they had even started the meat delivery business right and they brought in all that no contact and so on now if you look at on the 18th of april they started the pet care delivery services also let means if i have a cat or a dog you know they will get the pet food and then they will go to my home by 24th of april and this is again one week later uh, they started uh, telling the restaurant that they can share their banner space with the groceries so the the banner space were being shared and so on so they were kind of managing both but obviously you cannot rely only on restaurant business because that has gone down a lot so starting of jenny starting of grocery deliveries where there was a lot of competition already in grocery because amazon was there and if you now look at amazon amazon was moving in the opposite direction right now swiggy was moving in in uh, swiggy was moving out of food delivery and amazon was entering into food delivery in at a time when food delivery business was going up and that is very very interesting you know that why would amazon enter into a food delivery business because it's basically expansion right so now amazon was entering into food delivery because they had They, they were earlier into grocery delivery right largely they were the e-commerce company uh, into uh, largely resting on grocery delivery but since pandemic hit them uh, the e-commerce business also remained shut for 6 to 8 weeks because why because not that customers were not ordering but the problem was in transportation the transport sector was in a total shutdown their their their, their stocks cannot move from you know warehouses to fulfillment centers and from one place to another so because of the total lockdown situation in from early march to end of april there was a lot of loss i mean the entire business was in a total mess and the e-commerce business was actually shut because you know there is no delivery happening there is no transportation happening uh, so you can't uh, you can't take orders right i mean you can't deliver you can't take orders so the whole e-commerce suffered a lot and when you shut for 6 to 8 weeks they don't want to pay uh, salary so they they started firing people there were a lot of job losses <coughs> those who remained had to take haircut on their salaries and and obviously the 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 common man also reduced the consumption so to some extent so people were buying grocery but they were not buying electronics or computers or televisions or anything else, right so we had cut down a lot of consumption if you remember because of pandemic getting us similarly the retailers also had to take a lot of hit uh, in the sense that a lot of uh, for example apparel you know people were not buying apparel because people were sitting at home so whether it is apparel man, uh, retailers whether it is electronics retailers uh, whether you are uh, you know in, into any industry uh, which is into impulse purchase lot of these uh, businesses actually suffer and uh, so and because of that because amazon had suffered losses in the grocery business they entered into food delivery and lot of other businesses were also moving into other businesses where they just wanted to expand so that uh, they could uh, even out the uncertainty of kind of focusing on too much of one kind of business right so everybody was doing everything else now if you look at the other kind of businesses which were suffering or affecting startups for example so startups were uh, 
I mean, the early stage startups were suffering because their funding dried up. Uh, their, their customers were also drying up and orders were going down. So many of the startups failed or are in the process of getting failed or going out. <clears throat> so the question was that either you can take the hit for three months, six months and come out of it in six months, then you can survive. See, if you are funded only for, if your funding stops and you can only fund yourself for the next three months and six months, and if you can survive those six months and, and, and wait for a bit of time to come, and then get funded, then you can survive. But if you if your funding uh, runs out, if your costs are higher than uh, the equity, then then you'll be out, right? So so that that way, uh, you know, many startups have failed. Uh, many are on the way out, and those who have survived are the ones who had a lot of funding to to kind of uh, sail through. And another sector that actually got badly affected is tourism, you know, because the airline industry suffered 25,000 crores of losses because it was all grounded, international flights were grounded, domestic flights only, I think, started in uh, early July or something. So international airline uh, travel will still take a year or more to, to recover because mo most of them are still not uh, functional in, in large number of sectors. So this is one se uh, sector, one industry which is facing lots and lots of losses. Uh, food companies, grocery business has done well, uh, whether it is offline stores or online e-commerce. Uh, in fact, to the extent that Make My Trip also entered into food delivery business. So you can just understand that uh, Make My Trip, which was which was solely focused on travel into food delivery, because they thought, you know, this is an area which will expand and they can make up for the losses. So just look at the synergy between the, 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 the core competency and, and where they Luxury brands have suffered because in, the, in these times, uh, people don't really buy a new BMW and so on. Um, healthcare has done well, nutritional products have done well. And some of the other interesting insights is like, for example, incense sticks, the Agarbatti, they have also done well. The Dhoop and Agarbatti have done very well because in, in the Western market, uh, so a lot of Agarbatti manufacturers in India have done well in the export market because in the European countries, a lot of people, a lot of consumers in the pandemic time have started using more of what you call uh, as a Perfumed oil. Uh, we don't that use that in India so much, but a lot of people in uh, in Western countries use perfumed oil as a as a soothing uh, mechanism. I mean, they use it as an immune boosting uh, uh, substance. Uh, now, this is not uh, you know culturally uh, tuned to us, but this is what they do abroad. So, a lot of other people use agarbattis for that purpose. Uh, we use agarbattis largely for religious purposes, uh, but there they use it for multiple purposes it can be immune boosting it can be disinfecting it can be uh, air freshening and so on so interesting things so the export businesses were doing well but the domestic businesses in agarbatti was not doing well okay so anyway so uh, to summarize uh, how does the co uh, you know the business disruption uh, which has already uh, been uh, we have seen this in last 6 8 months how do you really cope with it right and this was students who are entering into uh, being managers two years down the line or one year down the line. The very, very important lesson that pandemic has taught us is that there will be business disruptions all the time. And pandemic has been a huge business disruption, but uh, there will be smaller disruptions uh, any time and all the time, right? So how do you deal with them? So number one is that you have to be agile. You have to be very flexible, adaptable. You as a manager and business itself. So your business model has to have a, you know, uh, a lot of flexibility. Your business need to have a business model which is flexible, which means, for example, Swiggy, as we saw, that uh, if your food delivery business is in a Jupadi, you expand itself into grocery or Jimmy, and and so you have to have that speed of changing yourself, right? So that's very important. Second is the fact that manpower planning again has to be flexible if you want to cope up with the flexibility of uh, the. A business model. So, if you are, if you have too many permanent employees, if you have too many employees as such, if you're working on employee model, then you're, you know, then you will be ending up in a situation where the business is not doing well. You have to fire them, and you face a lot of flag and so on and so forth. But then, uh, such disruptions also lead the businesses to think about moving towards gig workers like Uber drivers or uh, Swiggy delivery boys or Amazon delivery boys. Those people who pick up gig work, they do work and they get paid for it, right? They don't get salary as such. So you deliver a food packet from X place to Y place and you get <coughs> so much of uh, money. Or you uh, make 15 trips in a day and you get so much of money like an Uber driver or a Ola driver. So this, these are called gig workers. So gig work, work as such and gig workers are probably going to 
might uh, you know probably become a uh, order of the day in, in the coming uh, uh, future where they might uh, you know become part of the business model so something which which uh, you know uh, will have to be uh, figured in by uh, by the businesses in the manpower plan how do you use big workers to maintain flexibility in your manpower planning right you can't have full time employees hiring and firing and all that is very very it takes a lot of time uh the third most important lesson is that how do you constantly rejig your business model all the time you know you can't wait for a disruption like pandemic to hit you and then you wake up and then you realize something has to be done because our business model has failed and then you change so that is more reactionary so one has to be more proactive uh and keep changing it before it hits us right so for example if you're looking at demand going down then how do you bring in uh innovate and bring more products new products in the in your stable so that uh they can make up for the other products whose demand is going down so that or, or you change your distribution model or you change your communication model so those kind of things have to be constantly innovated so innovation has to be very very important function in your business so that even business model innovation is an important topic right so you have to constantly innovate your business model and resilience very very important if something hits you can you stand up again right so for example swiggy it did not die ola did not die people said ola and uber will die because who will travel by car now right uh, people said the car companies will not be able to survive maruti said and, uh, and and the uh, hyundai is because who will buy a car now right uh, so so like that uh, you know they they these sectors have i mean they're not done well but they actually did not die i mean they they sprang up so there is a resilience um in in the way these sectors have uh, kind of bounced back some sectors are taking lot more time to bounce back like airline industry or a, a general transportation industry is taking lot of time for bouncing back similarly retail is taking lot of time for bouncing back so certain businesses of course one is that you know certain businesses are hit not that much so there is so therefore you can bounce back quickly but it's also about resilience that how quickly you can come back uh, after you hit because it depends again on how quickly you can innovate yourself and change and adapt yourself to the new reality or the new normal right and that also uh, brings us to the next point which is saying that if you really want to be flexible and resilient and adaptable in the market you have to use lot of technology and technology is not just computer or software or hardware it is about the way your businesses or your processes are structured right so yes it means lot of ai which can help you to constantly innovate and uh, keep improving your processes keep improving uh, keep automating your processes or keep automating um Uh, transactions so that you can constantly uh, you know uh, adapt yourself keep doing things the same thing in a better and better way every day uh, that requires constant use of technology but also it means that uh, it, it like the pro- technology is also about how processes needs to be constantly changed uh, made better improved uh, or, or get rid of them if it is not uh, useful so all of that is has to be done very proactively otherwise you know we'll be kind of reacting to such pandemic all that and the uh, last point is that uh, you know the pandemic has really taught all of us that nothing is uh, indestructible everything can be destructed and we are so much interdependent you know so for example we are looking towards government for vaccine we are looking towards government for subsidy you know somebody was telling me i was i was uh, talking to uh, a family business owner uh, in calcutta and he was telling me he has businesses in chile and south africa and india also so he was telling me that the kind of support they are getting from chile chilean government and south african government <coughs> that for example in south africa in australia also they said that in australia um, the government is paying half the employee cost as a support to please don't close your business you know we'll pay half of the employee cost at least for so many employees for so much of time we'll pay you half of it please don't shut your business we'll support you now that kind of support uh, um, and we talk about pandemic time so this kind of support has helped the businesses to stay alive at least for a long some long some more time uh, but it also brings home the point that uh, in this interdependent world you know and especially as we have seen in pandemic uh, situation uh, others can infect you and you can infect others so it's a interdependent world right so we are dependent on others not to do something foolish to give us the virus right in the same way we are so interdependent in the world that what others are doing will affect us and what we will do will affect us for example we are dependent on the government um for subsidies and if governments uh, like in australian government they have given subsidies it will probably help their businesses to stay afloat for a longer time if if indian government or other governments are not giving the subsidies or other other support probably businesses here will suffer more 
right so there's a lot of stakeholder engagement there's a lot of interdependency there's a lot of help that we need to give and take in order to survive together so we are all in it together so that is a very very big lesson that uh, you know pandemic has taught us so these were some of the kind of uh, you know the basic bullet points on how to run how managers of tomorrow how the students who will become managers uh, need to uh, learn the skills of constantly trying to innovate adapting themselves reskilling themselves uh, so that they are not dependent on just one industry or one job or one thing uh, and and they constantly can change when the required changes uh, are, are needed to be done okay so i'm done from my side um and any questions uh, from students or anyone please let me know nay nay we very happy to know uh, dr singh thank you so much for a very wonderful presentation so uh, we have many questions first sure. i want to ask because some all the faculty members many of them are attending so one question is uh, you know interdisciplinary from our faculty of operations and supply chain is uh, requesting that what are the implications sir of this changes in the marketing process and brand behavior for supply chain management so that is what you'd like to know uh, can you just repeat that uh, again please what are the implications of these changes for supply right. chain management supply chain management okay yeah so i mean it is it is very much supply chain dependent because see marketing uh, in fact we don't mention it so much but uh, there is entire supply chain that supports marketing right yes uh, so yeah the implications are huge because uh, again the same points that we mentioned in the last slide about flexibility and adaptability that they apply equally well to supply chain you know for example your vendors if some of the vendors are going out of business right uh, we don't have to react till they go out of business we need to have parallel support we need to keep many of the parallel vendors um uh, activated so that we can switch from one vendor to another or if vendors cost structure is changing because of pandemic you know it will affect our cost how do we ensure that our cost doesn't get disturbed or if 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 uh, his supplies get disrupted because of whatever problem in his country Uh, our supply should not, uh, you know, get disrupted. So therefore, it shows, and this is the interdependency, right? This is the interdependency that you were talking about. That I am dependent on small vendor, he is dependent on some other vendor, sub vendor. So we need to support each other, right? And 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 unless we are able to support each other uh, and find win-win situations, we will never be able to, you know, do good ourselves. So I think that's a common principle across uh, the business world. Hmm. Okay. Acha, one student, Pragya Devna, is asking. uh that you know after listening she's saying it was a wonderful talk and she's saying many people go to the sales profile in starting of the career right so what can be done when she is asking the implication of the career graph because ultimately they want to move to marketing and branding so she's basically asking that whether it's a good thing to start off in sales initially and then move to marketing correct good question yeah in fact i'll tell you a story um, <laughs> if you have uh, time you know and patience uh, to no, no, yeah. yeah okay so i'll tell you it happened uh, you know with my student so i uh, uh, when i joined i am calcutta in 2010 for initial 4 5 or 6 years i taught this very popular course called sales and distribution management yes, yes very popular i think yeah uh, even uh, yeah sanjana would have also attended probably or heard of it so uh, in that you know a lot of students used to take that course because they said uh, sir i will write it in my cv that i have taken sales and distribution course and this that and there were a lot of students and there were three sections and 240 students it was like crazy you know very difficult to handle those so many students but anyway so it was very very you know popular and all that so i remember one student and there may be there may have been more uh, cases i don't know but one student i remember very uh, very uh, clearly so i'll not name him so very smart student uh, he uh, i mean so so he graduated uh, after two years and he got placed in um, i think uh, it was uh, nokia or, or some company right? so uh, after that you know we were out of touch a uh, couple of years later i got invited by nokia to deliver some lecture to some in, in some distributor meeting in kolkata okay so uh, i was talking to the channel manager and suddenly i remembered this uh, student of mine also he joined nokia probably uh, i took a wild chance i said let me mention his name uh, to the channel manager maybe uh, you know he'll be able to remember uh, and uh, he might tell me so i just mentioned the name of the student that do you know this person he was my student two or three years back and uh, by any chance do you know him 
he said okay sir which badge is that and then he could connect and then he told me yeah 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 sir but he is his face was little down so i i i thought i don't know what i have said to him he he was little sad I, uh, you know i was just wondering what happened so i told him what happened you said you said you remember he said yes sir i remember he joined but he is about to leave i said now uh, i said okay fine maybe but i just asked so why is he leaving so he said sir he had a uh, <laughs> he said he had a attitude problem so i said what is that what do you mean so he said sir he uh, he was a good student but when we put him in sales in 3 months he came back and said i have learned everything sir he he told to his reporting boss and then his reporting boss said uh, what do you mean you have just been in sales for 3 months uh, and we all spent 3 years in sales before you know we we can say we have learned something and now you are saying in 3 months you have learned everything and this this uh, student of mine said sir i have learned everything in 3 months please give me strategy now give me a role in strategy and 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 you know and he kept on saying this and and then you know maybe some of the seniors did not like it because i don't know why what what the problem but anyway so i was told that you know senior said that how can you say that you learned everything in 3 months when we all worked so hard for 3 years in sales which is like a you know it's like a what do you call a mandatory stint you know it's like a, a rural stint for a mbba student you know you have to work uh for as an intern for two years or in rural stint for one year or whatever so so every company and and same thing happened you know i had a, a wonderful ra uh, student who was uh, uh, who, who was uh, working in sales in marico in calcutta i remember he was working very hard and he was also saying sir this company is making me work like you know donkey this that this that i said everybody in marketing <coughs> starts in sales i we are I, I, uh, when i graduated from excel in 2003 lot of my friends joined uh, coca cola coke so the story that we used to hear oh coke is a great company wonderful career marketing career this that he said you know all my dreams broke because they put me in sales and this is like almost 3 years and they are not pulling pulling me out of sales i want marketing i want to become brand manager they're saying no without 3 years completion you how if you have not worked on the field you can never learn marketing and story mm-hmm. happens to every single company you know for example some of my friends were in itc so they have been said oh we we'll learn you know we we'll learn sales distribution one year and by second year i'll move to you know something very exciting like branding mm-hmm. same story in three years he remained in sales for three years and he said we were told we were given bicycles and we were told to go to the villages and sell uh, cigarettes on bicycles mm-hmm. the coke chap said that we were told to Uh, shun our cars oh, and yes. travel in the coke truck mm. at least 6 hours you should be traveling in the coke truck delivering bottles empty bottles filled bottles this that and you have to sit beside the driver mm. know the know the route know how many crates empty crates and filled crates are being uh, uh, given and taken in every retail store and in one week you should know the order volumes of every retailer in each route and then in the second in the week you guide the driver so that is the kind of grind you know for example i remember uh, uh, you know one of my good friends from excelera in uh, in my batch who's now the brand director of Surf, uh, Surf excel asia south asia mm-hmm. when he started his career in unilever the first 3 years he was work he was made to work with the distributor in such a you know at a, at a very such a basic level that they used to work hand to hand they used to <coughs> lift the uh, lift the what do you call the cartons from his hand that the peti they call it peti in hindi it's a carton the cases of lux soap or the case in which the the soaps are there they are called carton they called peti in hindi or cartons in english so they used to pick it up from the distributors go down and and keep it in the delivery truck sometimes knowingly sometimes because uh, the distributor says saab wo kaun rakhega saman ab matlab hath laga doge thoda sa and you can't say i am the area sales manager from i am calcutta i am not going to do it you can't say that i remember there was a channel very senior channel manager from itc uh, who used to come to sales and distribution class to deliver the guest lecture himant malik he is on the board of itc now he used to say that he he received a complaint from one of the i am c uh, students who spoke very rudely to a distributor when distributor said ki saab thoda hath laga do na peti lag denge labor late kar raha he said i am i am the asm i am the saab i you know you don't tell me this i tell you what to do 
and he felt bad he said himant we have worked together for 30 years from the days when you joined as a area and himant is also an alum you would know jayant you know himant malik is our alum you know in itc right so himant had appointed that distributor and this is 30 years down the line when himant is the coo of certain <laughs> brands i forgot <laughs> and he gets a call from the same distributor <clears throat> which he appointed 30 years ago saying that ek ladka hai tumhara jo jisko attitude problem hai wo kehta hai wo peti ko haath nahi lagayega tum samjha do nahi to hum samjha denge <laughs> see that is so you can't so you know that is my message to all students you know be humble and we all have started from sales even i have started my whatever career i had in corporate i started from sales you have to work with the distributor not on the top of him not on the below him work with him treat him like he's equal and mm-hmm. three years at least i mean this is what i have seen you know i've never worked in fmcg but this is what i've heard from every uh, colleague of mine coca cola itc unilever png marico amul every one of them and they are in very senior positions today uh, my batchmates 2003 batchmate very very senior positions some in itc some in coke some in unilever you know they are brand directors etc etc and they have all started you know with a very humble you know what do you call mindset ye kandhe se kandha mila ke work shoulder to shoulder with your distributor with your dealer going to retailer's place sitting with the retailer having a cup of chai the chai itself is thinking but you have to have it you have to drink it because it is about his hospitality it is a relationship building and this is what sales will teach without sales you cannot manage brands without sales you cannot manage you know you can't manage sales also if you have not done it you can't manage you can't manage channels you can't manage anything so it is very very basic you know thing that you should know how the truck is parked how many cartons are stacked how are they stacked in a truck how much time does it take how much manpower is required how are the stocks should be should be moved how should it be stored where should it be going what route it will take how much time will it take how much is the cost of per carton per kilometer if you use a two ton truck if, if you are using a one ton truck all of this these guys know by heart on the tip of the tongue that is the kind of you know uh, what do you call uh, sharpness i have seen in the sales guys you know that that brings in so much sharpness these guys are absolutely razor sharp absolutely razor sharp you wake them up at 1 o'clock in the morning and ask kitna number hua abhi tak bevel ka kitna bika and they'll just rattle it off mm. you know so that is the kind of skilling i would request your students to actually pay attention to that you know that don't i mean think that you are an mba or you will become an mba and you will be saab and he'll be a retailer distributor be humble work with them and they will respect you respect them they respect you and you will rise uh, faster and, and 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 surely you'll rise if you're humble if you respect your juniors and everybody else you know everybody every damn person if you respect him you will get double the respect and your rise will be faster if you are humble rather than when you are not humble i don't know if that answers the question yeah, okay. uh, mr ramendra thank you very much it's a very comprehensive answer and i can just say the same thing even my classmates of iit kharagpur iit iim uh, they are today no one is low, lower than a vice president but you know the uh, i remember my friend i since they were school iit kharagpur i am calcutta this was his background very good family in jodhpur park he was in asian paints and he was telling you know like truck mein dhaba mein baith ke khana padta hai you know asian right. Right. but you know that is the mba students is just a career accelerator you know if right. you start and a ba uh, bcom starts so you will rise faster but how can you do strategy sitting in your office in the computer if you have not known what is burdwan what is bakoda what is purulia what is what is patna what is ranchi what is jamshedpur you know you cannot do that so i think dr ramendra you have you know answered us so much you know i really thank you for giving such a comprehensive answer with examples and i am I, my experience is exactly the same as yours you know so we should we should bring strategy once you have and you are young so the students are young now so they can rough it out one more right. question from riya vishwas she is saying sir would online sales completely take off uh, physical stores in next 5 years because of changes would online sales hmm. completely take off the physical stores format in the next 5 years i don't think so uh, riya i think uh, both will coexist as, as as they have coexisted for so many years you know it will and you know a lot of research has gone into this 
there has been a lot of uh, talk about this with the online uh, wipe off or offline uh, other question asked is will big stores like walmart wipe off small stores like rana stores so there are there, there are real challenges i mean this is a very valid question but uh, what experts say is that this is not going to happen now i'll give a data you know piece of data today if you look at the indian retail industry <coughs> it is around 800 or 900 uh, billion dollar indian retail total right Right. retail it's around 900 billion it might have come down after covid around 800 to 900 billion dollar out of that online is only 3% yeah it is only 3% 97 yes. percent is offline right and we are talking about online which came to india at least what 3 4 years back yeah. right and it is not going to it, it is going to increase but from 3 to 5 to maybe 10 but it is mm. definitely not going to wipe off. I'll give another example. So, for example, the world's largest retailer, which mm. one? Walmart, right? Right. So Walmart's total uh, turnover is around, world over turnover is around 500 odd billion dollars. Maybe a little more here or there. You know, I don't remember exactly, but around 500 to 600 billion dollars. Only 12% of this turnover is online sales. 66 billion dollars is their online sales of Walmart out of right. 550 right. billion dollar of offline total sales mm. so again if you look at you know these numbers it shows that even walmart could not uh, walmart's online sale is only 10 12 percent right so it is not going to be that big uh, the reason is very simple because uh, so again this is a good question which probably uh, uh, co combines question from pragna also that what is the proposition that customers will get in offline store versus online store and this is a very good question this can be combined you know these questions i'm taking in combination because you get a different value in online, you get a different value in offline. Mm. In online, mm. you can sit at home, uh, press a couple of clicks or uh, whatever, you know, uh, uh, swipe your fingers and you can browse, you can put in the cart, you can check out, you can pay, etc. etc. Home delivery and maybe credit, uh, maybe convenience, all those things come into picture, right? This is what you get when you buy online. But uh, what about offline? So there is a concept of showrooming, right? People going to the uh, store yeah. and trying yeah. products. Right and coming and buying online, so the the physical world will remain because physical world is that feel uh, touch and feel factor. Uh, you can uh, go and exchange the product. Uh, you can go yourself. So there, there is a pe there are people there. There's a trust factor there. Um, then uh, there's a question of uh, you know trials. So for example, in apparels you try. Um, so, so a lot of these things cannot be brought to the online world. At least not yet. Right. So. So even across the world, if you look at various case studies or various different, you know, retail stores, chain of stores, uh, nobody has been, in fact, nobody is even saying that on, off, uh, online will wipe off offline. It is just not possible. What they are, what experts are saying is that offline and online will coexist and they will seamlessly combine. That means you do some part of your shopping online, then you go to offline, then you go online, then you go offline. I mean, it can be any combination of offline and offline. So that you can go and compare prices online, you can go and try on the offline, then you can go and uh, maybe, you know, compare something else offline, online. Uh, you, can, you can go and buy online if you get a good deal there, or you can go and buy offline if you get a good deal there. So, so both of them gives you different value proposition and both will coexist. As of now, you know, you know how much sales is happening from both, right? So, but it's a good question. Yeah. The last question, she's saying, uh, what will the shift in the job trends uh, post COVID? Job trends, yeah, very, very scary question, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we really don't know, but what uh, seems like is again, as we said, there's a lot of flexibility that companies are trying to build and uh, agility and adaptability. So, you know, permanent employment probably has gone. You know, I mean, that is something that people have already said goodbye to. So, there's nothing like permanent employment. I mean, probably it was not there uh, many years ago also so what we are probably looking at is gig work as we said you know people who will work on a you know on a temporary basis they will choose to work and get paid for it they will they can move in and move out right they will like like the ola driver right i can uh, i can be a driver who is called by an ola car owner can you drive my car for a month i i, I can you know i can uh, ask him the price and he gives me a good price i can drive the car in one month for ola Another month I will drive for Uber, third month I can drive for something else. So it's like, you know, people working across companies, not for one company, but for multiple companies. And there is no concept of, 
you know single employment single employer single employment it is uh, it is it's more like a employees getting converted into a contractor so if you look at the us model many employees like for example microsoft and google work on that model many uh, employees actually are on paper they are not working as employees they are working as contractors but the work if you look at they come to the office the work and if you don't know their contract they will mistake them to be employees they work they look like they work like uh, almost like employees office mm-hmm. hours and so on but obviously the the real contract is different it is more like a contractor so they like they can they have a different terms of getting fired or getting hired different structure of salary they are more on performance uh, bonuses and performance uh, based uh, incentives so more and more it will become uh, performance oriented and uh, contract oriented gig work oriented contractor oriented those kind of things it's very it's going to become more transactional that's what it looks like yeah. currently yeah. it is very relational like japanese model where i everybody is employed for life uh, will move closer to mm-hmm. the american model which is like you know it's like temporary assignment based Well, looks like that but mm-hmm. i'm not sure so no, no, i i also tend to agree with what you're saying and therefore the message for the students is that aap kabil bane must you must search for excellence make yourself uh, you know but even if one company is closing down you have got enough skill sets you got enough you know uh, value that you know someone else is willing to take you that's i think the main thing is it is it not like you're saying for the organization agility the individual also has to be agile has to keep learning so not only after mba he has to keep attending online courses various courses so that you know and if he knows the market well if one company shuts down he will to shift to the second market i totally agree with your answer so dr singh that uh, brings us to the end of this more than one you know you have spent almost 75 minutes today with us so as a formal vote of thanks i would like to thank you from the heart of my heart for coming and you know <laughs> much much bigger. but in the private sector we are really having a very nice campus very nice infrastructure so once the campus opens we'll uh, uh, invite you to come sure, sure. we are hoping we are hoping that by december as per government guidelines that we understood uh, so we hope that you know we will open the campus and so will you be so we look forward to you know and also kindly convey my regards to director anju seth sure sure uh, professor anju seth we kindly convey our uh, regards from the entire cbs faculty and student side for mm-hmm. kindly conducting letting us conduct uh, so thank you so much thank and we look for forward me. to see you soon we look forward to see you soon sure same here thank you so much I nice to meet you thank you for all the sales thing you answered with such comprehension you know giving so <laughs> much details you know so that was really the apart from the presentation which was so structured it was so structured you put so much effort to put the presentation the real examples so i think even the question and sessions we learned a lot from you so thank, thank you, you again professor ravindra and we look forward to having you soon again sure sure, sure. my pleasure thank you thank you, thank you.